Hello everybody and welcome to Handmade Hero Show where we code a complete game live on stream. Before we get started, in case you weren't with us yesterday, just wanted to point out we're doing a Kickstarter right now for our comic at Molly Rocket. So please do check it out. Uh, you can go directly to the Kickstarter website with this address if you want to, but also we put a little banner on the Handmade Hero page so you can just click on that if you want to get there. And we're pretty excited about it. It looks like it will probably hit its goal. So if you're interested in a print copy of our comic, please check it out. Uh, it's the only way to actually get one. So let's get started today. And uh, I also, at the end of this, I wanted to mention we're going to be putting up some fun stuff uh, for in celebration of the Kickstarter. So I'll point that out at the end of the stream. Uh, but for now, let's get started. So uh, yeah, yesterday we left a, on a fairly uh, unfortunate note, I'm afraid. We tried to capture the lighting solution into basically test files uh, that we could run, and for whatever reason, we got completely different results when we tried to run it in the test app versus when we run it in the game, and we don't actually know why. And so one thing that I would like to do here is I want to go ahead and try capturing. Someone mentioned at the end of the stream, and I think it's a good idea. Uh, I wanted to try capturing the lighting solution in a single-threaded case to see whether we have some multi-thread bug we didn't know about that's like not an actual like race condition or something, but something where we're using something unpredictably because we do use entropy in this system. And so, for example, if we had two threads reading an entry value that overrode it at different times or something, you'd never see that bug because it's not even necessarily really a bug. It's just because you're trying to get random numbers anyway. So we'd never know, right? So what I'd like to do is maybe try to make it so that we're a little bit more specific about how we're doing it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, change to the code where we can capture a couple different uh, ways of like sort of a couple different packets of data, and then I'm going to see if there's any difference between them. And this is, again, uh, all we're trying to do here is we have kind of a weird situation that we don't understand. So as we go we're, as we go through the debugging process, what we're trying to do is build up like an understanding of what the problem might be so that we can find it. And so eliminating things like whether there's threading involved or not in the uh, pathology of the bug is very helpful because it lets us cut out a swath of pot uh, potential failures right away without us having having to really um, do any kind of advanced debugging work to find them. So that's what we want to do. We're trying to find the cheapest possible ways, like the least amount of time that we can take to uh, find a bug that, uh, to, 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 to like narrow down that, where the bug could be, right? So if we go ahead and do a compile here, uh, I want to say we're going to be using O2 because that's the thing, because we're doing profiling work, so we want to be doing O2 uh, in as much as we can. And what I'd like to do is just go ahead and uh, we'll run this under Remedy and we'll do some captures into different directories uh, and I'll just save them off. So if we go ahead, oh, you know what one other thing I wanted to do that I forgot to do? So one other thing that I would like to do is when we set that uh, capture variable, it captures continuously, which is not particularly useful because we just want one capture. We don't want to keep overwriting the capture. So what I might also do is say, look, when we uh, do the, the dump, so you can see here, when we, when we do the final piece of dumping out the data, I would like to go to Lightbox dump trigger and uh, turn that off, right? So after we do a dump of all the lighting data that we can use in the test app, uh, I want to then go ahead and say, don't, don't do any more. So it, we set it to true, it'll set itself back to false after it finishes one complete write of the data stream. So that's all we're doing, not very complicated. So let me go ahead and load up Handmade Hero here. I'm going to go ahead and take, um, what is this about? Work and, oh, interesting. So we made a change to this and it looks like we broke something. When we actually did uh, the, the arrangement of these work index indexes in the lighting core system, the, it looks like we're not getting an aligned version of the work count. What's up with that? So this is interesting and good. Uh, let me go ahead and go in debug mode because anything that we can get to provoke uh, a actual assertion, maybe will help us, like maybe the bug is just lurking in there. So I don't know, it probably isn't. I probably just didn't do something when we pulled this out, but you know, 
I can be hopeful. I can be hopeful. You know, don't, 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 uh, you know, don't put that on me. So if we take a look here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to check to make sure that this is aligned to 64. And you can see that it's not, uh, the bottom value should be zero there. Uh, and, you know, it's not zero at all. Uh, so that doesn't really make much sense. But, uh, so like, let me go ahead and, uh, I don't know what I can actually cast this to here. Maybe that. I don't know if Remedy can do this. No, it doesn't seem to like this. I'm not sure why. George, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe you can do this. Or, can I do this? No. All right, so I'm not sure how to do this. Maybe uh, X13 can tell us how. Uh, <laughs> we may have just generated a bug report for George. All right, George, you're on that one. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I don't need to see it. I know the assertion's firing. I believe it. Uh, I, I don't think that's false. Uh, so what I, oh, you know what? I know why. It's just because our pad is wrong. So this right here, uh, where we added these two in, that means our pad is gonna be off here because we wanted these things aligned so they wouldn't be uh, over. So remember, we're using this for summing data on multiple threads. We don't want the threads to be uh, looking at the same cache line. So we need this lighting uh, work structure to be aligned properly to those cache lines. Uh, we should probably put a CT assert in here uh, for that, right? So if you look here, uh, we have a uh, an ability to do like a static assert. I'm gonna say like, let's just assert that the lighting work is always going to be one cache line long. And if it's one cache line long, then uh, we know that the rest of the code will work fine. If it's not one cache line long, uh, oh, and I guess I don't have to, to put in a name because we actually already put a, a thing in there. So that should give us our assertion, right? Um, so now what we should see is that should fire, and it does. So that's good. So this is an error now, right? And then we would know we just have to change this. So we know that we were supposed to have uh, this exact thing minus uh, 8, because we, we changed this to having one pointer to having two pointers. So we added 8 to it. So that just means we would subtract 8 here, and then we should be fine, right? So that's good. Uh, unfortunately, that's not our bug. That was just a thing when we changed it for the lighting system. We forgot we wanted to keep that padded properly. So we got an assertion in there now. That'll fire. That's all fine. Uh, so all right. So we're good. Let's go back to capturing the lighting data. Um, I wish that had been something that we could have counted on to cause our problem, but it, you know it isn't. So if I go ahead and run here, here's the game running, right? And we want to capture the lighting. We don't really care where we're capturing the lighting, but we want to capture it in two different ways. We want to capture it uh, multi-threaded and we want to capture it single-threaded into two different uh, packages of data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the debug directory, so in handmade uh, debug, and I'm just going to sort by type so we have our dump files here. I'm going to delete those files so we know that we're not storing any of them. I'm then going to just go ahead and say, like, before we enter this part of the routine, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set uh, this light box dump trigger to true. Um, in fact, I guess I can just do that. Uh, how do we, we don't really have a way to do that, do we, at the moment? Um, you know what I maybe should do? Can we just make this be like one of these things? Um, can we just put that in here? I might do that, actually. I think that's, because then we just push a button and it does it, right? Uh, trigger, I don't know where that thing is, lighting. Um, here. So this thing here, I just, yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe we just put this out here as an editable value. Um, Debug B32 lightbox dump trigger, maybe. 
So if I do that, I think I might just be able to just have a one click thing. So I just click it and then, you know, that seems fair, right? So if this thing, if we just said like dump, in theory, I want to say that it dumps it for us. So that means we could just create a couple of directories here. So uh, we've got these set of dumps and this set of dumps would be multi-threaded, right? Um, and then we can do a similar dump that's just for single threaded. So if I come in here and just recompile uh, with the, without the lighting queue. So if I take that and make stuff that with a zero, so now the lighting will run single threaded, if that makes sense. Um, so like if we take a look back at the game here, it'll run much slower. You can see it's running much slower because it's single threaded now. So instead of using eight cores, well, I think it was only using six for the lighting, but instead of using all those cores, it's actually just using one. So it should be about like six times slower. And now I should be able to dump it again in single threaded mode. Uh, and here's a single threaded version. So now I have a capture of a single threaded version and a capture of a multi-threaded version. So we can look at those two and see if there's any difference between them. Uh, I'm guessing there won't be, but if there is, where like one works and one doesn't, then that's a, a clue, right? Um, it's just a clue for us that we've got uh, something weird happening in terms of sharing a value that we didn't think we were sharing across the threads. So uh, that's, I think, all we really need to do there. So I'll undo the part where we, uh, where we did that, uh, turning off the multi-threading. So now we're back to, uh, to doing it uh, multi-threaded and, and you know, the, the game runs at normal speed. So all that seems fine. And now with Remedy BG, I should be able to set the directory here to like debug uh, multi-threaded. Oh, well, I guess, you know, I don't even have to do it in Remedy BG because I'm not really debugging right now. So I guess I can just come in here and do it, right? So inside handmade debug, uh, if I go to single threaded, I can go run build uh, HH lightprof and see what happens. So that's what the single threaded one reports. If I go to multi-threaded and do it, um, it's like the same. I mean, these are two different captures, right? So they're going to be a little bit different, but you can see it's not like one worked and the other one didn't. We get different, we get different results, right? Uh, in e either case. So it's like, nah, okay. Um, so this is not great, right? Uh, this is not a good thing. It means we don't have any further information. It means we don't probably have some strange multi-threading bug, uh, where we're sharing values, but it doesn't tell us what we're actually doing wrong uh, in the light profiler because it's, you know, it should be the case that once we set this stuff up, uh, when we go down into the guts of the, of the program, this should run fundamentally the same way that it runs in the main app, right? They should run the same way. And they're obviously not, so the question is why? Now, one of the things that's true is when we set up the light atlases here, I don't know if maybe there's something that we're not doing that we should be doing when we're setting up the light atlases. Uh, that part is not clear to me. So we might want to check that, right? We might want to see if there's something weird going on there. Um, I'm not actually sure. But, you know, we can look to see if there's, if there's some kind of weird like voxel difference. I don't actually know. But the reason that, I, again, why I say this is suspicious, or rather uh, why I'm confused about what's going on, is that if we look at the lighting core here and we see what we're calling, we're calling exactly the same thing in both cases. And yet when we do our validation pass, we see that the results are completely different. So we don't even get remotely what we would expect to get after calling exactly, functionally exactly the same thing. And the question is just, why is it that we have such a difference between these two things? Is there something going on in here that we don't understand? Or is my validation routine busted? I don't really know, right? So in terms of what's going on with the uh, validation, you can see how this is, is working here. Um, And you know, it seems like we're taking a sane approach to it. We make our light atlases and we just seed them with the data that was already in them 
when we start. So when we call internal lighting core here, which is what we're about to call, we dump out, right, you can see here, we dump out the uh, texels, right? And we load those texels in. I mean, that's all that's happening here. And so we should be starting with exactly the same data that we had, right? Um, and I guess I don't have any way of knowing that it really is exactly the same data, so I suppose that's a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Similarly, like the solutions sh should be the same. Here's it writing out the boxes that it started with. Um, and that seems right. I guess I should double check that there's nothing weird that happens with the boxes. I mean, it, it, it looks fine, right? You can see it taking the box count here. Um, and the box ref count will be zero when we start. So all of that should be fine. This building the diffuse maps will get saved when we save the solution itself. So that will come in with the correct maps or should. Uh, so again, I don't see where the difference is coming in. So I think, I mean, unless I can think of something else to do, I think the only way we're really going to be able to debug this is by stepping through carefully in both and seeing where they diverge. I don't know uh, any other way to really do it. Um, so what I could start with is trying to validate more things. So for example, in here where we've got this debug light dump trigger, we can go back and we can put that at the very top. So now everyone can look at this. We can go to any particular step of the process and make sure that when that step happens, we uh, validate after it. So for example, when we do the build uh, light partition part of things, so after this part here, where we build the spatial partition for lighting, we can just make that also get validated. So for example, let's suppose in here we did um, a test here. And in addition to dumping the data we have, we call this uh, result spatial partition. And then what we can do is say, whatever the spatial partition that we produced was, we dump that whole thing out. And I believe the spatial partition itself, because we haven't gotten creative with it yet, there really isn't, it's basically the same as this call. You know, it, all we did was increase the number of boxes because we just built more boxes, right? That's, that's all there is. So, We can dump those out here, uh, the spatial partition and uh, the you know box refs, I guess, because uh, I think there's also the box refs. You can see here we've got uh, the box ref count and the box table here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I think we should be able to to put those out. I don't know whether. Like I said, I don't know whether the box ref count and the box table themselves are getting reset properly, but they should be. When we load in the lighting solution, it should be set to zero box refs, I believe. Uh, or whatever the correct setting was for the initial sweep. So I wouldn't imagine we would have a problem there. But again, uh, let's just check. We don't know where our bug is, so we can't afford not to be paranoid. So what I would say here is, yeah, we can redump the boxes. Uh, so maybe I just won't even call it that. I'll just call it result light boxes. And then I'll call this result box refs. So in here we can basically say, all right, there's a box ref count and it can be uh, a dump of this thing, right? So uh, in fact, I'll just do it this way, box table. So we'll dump that whole thing. And then we have a, uh, I don't know. We, we have that list, right? So that would at least let us verify what the set of things was that we produced during the spatial partition build so that we can eliminate that from the, from the problem, like from the, uh, we're just trying to bisect the 
program into pieces so we know which part to focus our attention on because otherwise it'll take us forever, right? So here I'm gonna dump out these two in addition and then uh, so we'll just run our app like we normally would and do exactly what we were gonna do uh, the last time to dump. So I'm just gonna come in here and say, okay, uh, dump out. Now we should have a dump that has, you know, all of this same stuff in it, but with the two additions of the, the box refs and the light boxes on the output side rather than only on the input side, right? So uh, if I go into that code now, and uh, if I go into the test code, I can now add those loaders in here. So in here we can say, all right, we ha oh, and by the way, we can delete these now because we don't actually care about those. There was no, nothing was learned, unfortunately. Why can I not delete that? Thank you, Windows. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at loading these in. If I, if I do, um, what did I call this? Result light boxes, oops. So if I load the result light boxes in uh, and I load the result box refs, is that what it's called, box refs? Yeah. We can now validate those and validating those is pretty easy because all we really need to do is take this piece of code here and after we build uh, the spatial partition, which would be in this internal lighting core uh, bit here, right? We just have to validate it. So, oops. Um, so after this call, uh, we would just validate and see if it's the same because I don't think there's any changes that happen in here. There shouldn't be because again, it's multi-threaded. Uh, across so if people were updating that lighting hierarchy during that it would be very bad so we should be able to verify these at the end and if they're wrong that's a bug anyway so I'm fine with that so what we want to do here is do our validation so we would right here we would say okay compare right and I, I thought we had a compare memory or uh, diff memory mm, maybe we don't R equal Anyone? Anyone know? I mean, it's this code, right? You can just call this code. Uh, it's exactly the same, right? Uh, you can see here, it's it's the same. This It's this routine. So, sure. So, all we need to do here is is uh, do like a compare. I don't. I thought we had a mem compare, but I guess we never called it that. Um, so yeah, maybe we should. I don't know. We'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, so when we load this in, here's our res re result light boxes, and we want to take the count of that. And here's the light result light boxes of uh, data. So that's one of the inputs. And then we have, um, in addition to the count and data for the light boxes, we also want to be able to, uh, oh, and you know what? Do we have an R equal on buffers? Gosh, we don't. This weird. That's weird. Anyway, uh, so we wanna compare the result light boxes to the light boxes that we actually have. So the light box we actually have is uh, however big a lighting box is, oops. Uh, times the count. So I think that's that's all that is. And then the solution uh, light boxes. I'm pretty sure, right? Box count and boxes. So that's all we're comparing there. Um, <clears throat> so if that fails, then we want to print an error for that, right? Or, uh... So there's an error we can print for that. And uh, these have to be, you know, care star casts because we don't have the right function. So that's why I think I want to make a function for that. Um, so that's all we need there. And uh, if I now run this here, 
So that's messed up. Those don't match. I mean, that's great because it means that now we can actually go see how the heck our dump is failing so badly. Um, but, you know, it's weird, right? I must be missing something obvious, which is always the case. Because you start thinking about complex reasons why your code is failing, but and sometimes you find them immediately. When you don't find them immediately, it usually means that like something obvious is failing that you didn't think about that shouldn't be failing, and you're like, oh, duh, right? Uh, so, you know. <clears throat> Let's just go ahead here and see what's up. Um, solution box refs. So now we'll check both of those. Uh, box table, sorry. There we go. So I think that's better. So basically none of this stuff is right. So that's good, I guess. I mean, it means that right off the bat we're wrong. And if we're wrong immediately, that's better than being wrong later, I guess. So I guess that's good. I just, to be honest, don't really understand how that's possible. Uh, it's a bit strange, right? So I don't know if that means like we're reading the data in wrong or we're writing the data out wrong could also be the case. I don't know, but it seems weird. And why we would get different results in build spatial partition, I have no idea because you can see how simple this routine is. It's not multi-threaded, right? So this, we don't, we don't attempt to do this uh, across multiple threads. So it's not even really doing anything interesting. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to do this in a structured way here where we can uh, actually do a, a test of what happens in the debug dump and then the debug reload, which is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. Like, it's not, it's not going to be fun. But we're going to try. So here's how we're going to do it, and, uh, you know, for better or for worse. I'm gonna set the debug trigger, right? So in here, I'm gonna set this debug uh, trigger to true, okay? So that means on the first time through, we're gonna start dumping the data, okay? So if I now, and I've set it to debug build, right? So when we come to internal lighting core, we should, the very first time, we should come through here and we should hit this breakpoint before we've even seen a frame of our game, right? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's take a look at what the status of thing is, is here. So here's our solution, right? And here's the number of boxes that have been entered. Uh, the box ref count is zero, which it should be because we don't have anything, uh, we haven't built the spatial partition, right? So I'm going to go ahead and let this dump all of the things that we just talked about. So, you know, uh, oh, so that's a bug right there. As I just stepped through it. That was supposed to be a star. Right? You saw that, right? That wasn't just me. What's up with that? Mistakes you can't make when you have metaprogramming. Uh, so anyway, when we come through here now, we're going to dump that again. And I guess now let's, let's actually test to make sure that wasn't our only problem, because that's a complete disaster, right? So now we should have our dumps. Uh, here's the game running incredibly slowly because it's in debug mode. Um, we should have our dumps. Let's just see what happens now if we actually try to run the light prof. Uh, of course, again, this is in, uh, still says they don't match. So, you know, maybe we're still, maybe that wasn't the only problem and it's not so bad. Um, although I would say 
this error dropped dramatically just from that. However, we're still getting these two complaints. Um, so I'm not sure why that's a little bit messed up. Let me just see uh, what's going on there. So yeah, I'm not sure why that is wrong. Because I don't feel like those should have been wrong. Um, so I think we still have some issues here. Now it could be that they only, that they're only, it could be that the only reason that they don't match is because of, again, some like minor floating point differences. So I guess it's hard to say. Um, because when I look at this, I'm like, man, that is well within floating point tolerance now. This was not really, this is. So if the total error across the entire 614,400 texels was 0.4, that error per texel is so low that it's definitely down in where floating point error could have done something. So, I don't really know now. So let's actually make something that validates our light boxes to see what the floating point error is of them, uh, which will take a little bit more time. Uh, although if the box refs are different. So the box refs though shouldn't be different, right? Because the box refs are just numbers. And unless the floating point error was so large that it actually caused us to make different decisions when we were splitting the lighting, we shouldn't have had that happen. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, I'm not, not comfortable yet. I'm still a little worried. So let's do what I was going to do. We found one problem, so good on us. But I'm, I'm not convinced yet. So we'll we'll leave it at that for now. Um, oh, so the right, yeah, okay. So we just we had a cut we had a cut and paste error there, though, right? I'm glad to know it was our dump that was wrong and not our code, because <laughs> the debug dump being wrong is is much easier to fix. Uh, where was that? So there you go. All right. Okay, so let me try that one more time. Here's the run of the game, again in debug mode. Okay, so super slow debug mode run, light prof run. So it looks like our box refs are a little borked there but the light boxes were correct. So I'm not sure why that would be the case, but let's go ahead and take a look. Um, did I mess up this as well? So box ref count times the box table pointed to the table. I think that sh should be right, shouldn't it? Box ref count times switching box table times the pointer to the box table. Hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at those values because we should be able to validate that those are right or wrong pretty easily with the setup we've got. So let's just see. So let's go ahead to the uh, debug dump of the box table, the reference table. So in here, we would expect to see this box table come out, right? So this is what we would expect to see coming out uh, when we dump. And the size that we would expect if we look at the box ref count here, so the box ref count is 25, uh, 25, 24. 25, 24 times two, 
which is the total size of the uh, of each reference because each reference is a u16 should be 5048 so when we step in here and we ask to dump what we would like to see is that number and we do so uh, that's fine right and uh if i copy this value in here just so we remember what it is although i guess i don't even have to do that really what i can do is just put this on the side so i'm going to go ahead and run another copy of remedy and i'm just going to put it like over here right I'm going to go in to the recent mem menu and load up the profile program now. And I'm going to step into that. So we're going to launch it in D handmade debug. I'm going to step through here. And I just want to see what happens uh, when we like go to do this comparison, like what actually happens wrong. So here's where we're going to get that printf. So here's where we're saying that it's busted. So if we look at result box refs, uh, so that size is wrong. Uh, 5372 is not correct. So when we did our ftl for that file, we didn't get 5048, right? Um, I mean, that's just a truncation problem. Yeah? So, so that's just plain busted, and I'm not sure what is exactly busted about it, but like this process didn't work properly or something. And so we would need to figure out like what, what's happening there, right? Um, and that seems odd. It's almost like it's ignoring this or something. I don't know. But anyway, so if you look at that size, we expect that dump to be... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, sorry. I, I went too fast. This has to actually do the dump first. Duh. So now it has dumped that file, and hopefully now this would be correct. My bad. Got a little bit too aggressive there. Now, I'm still not optimistic about that because it should be the same in either case, right? Like, it's, a, it's, it's on startup that that happened, so I'm not sure why we would ever get different results, but, you know, just trying to be fair here, right? All right. So, yeah, it's still wrong. So, that's what I would have expected. So, somehow, the 5048 dump, we're getting the wrong value there, and I'm not sure exactly what... The reason is possibly because the FTEL mode isn't stable way to do that. I don't know. If we look at result boxrefs.dump, though, 5372 is the actual size of it. So why this is not working is a little bit confusing, right? Because we tried to write it out at that size, but didn't. And it's not clear why. So that's our first problem, right? Um, because there's result box refs, result box that dump. That's what we tried to write out. We expect it to be that big, and it wasn't. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out why that's the case, like why we didn't get the size we expected. I'm going to go in here and turn this off. Uh, the, I'm going to stop the debug of the light prop program. So I'm going to take a jump <clears throat> back into this debug dump output and see what is going on there. So if I come in here and I say I want to write data to file, I'm expecting 5048. I come in here uh, and we go, all right, um, you know, what's going on? It looks like this, so I can tell already what the problem is. So it looks like the problem here is that we don't have a way of saying that it should set the file size, I guess, right? Like, it's just going to replace that file's first part. And I don't know that we ever put in a way to change that. So this right here, um, <clears throat> we can fix the comparison, but we might want to actually add a way to set the file size, because currently we don't have that. So the dumps aren't the right size necessarily, right? 
So when we do platform write data to file, uh, it doesn't look like we have a way to set what we expect the file size to be, right? Um, and that would be a platform function that we would actually need. Unless we have a way to say, just replace the file uh, when you actually open it, but I don't think we do, right? So we have like open file, like read and open file write. We don't have an open file replace. So I don't know. I don't know that I actually want to do that now, but I might just say, So the way we can fix this though is pretty simple. We would just say, look, uh, we don't really care about what the size was. We're gonna use uh, this size in both cases, right? So regardless of what you load, we, we just use this. So something like this. So this validates that all of them are the same, but it doesn't actually check the size of the data, which I don't love. So I feel like we probably don't really, yeah, I feel like we probably don't really want that. We want the dump to be what it is. You know what I mean? So I guess what I would say is let's, let's just do it. Let's just bite the bullet, man. Um, you know what I'm saying to you? Let's just bite the bullet. So let's go in here and say, all right, there's gonna be a way that we can change this. So in here we can say like open file, close file, and there'll also be like set file size, right? So in here we can do a thing where we're actually gonna have, a, you know, much like we had all the rest of these platform things, we're gonna have exactly the same thing. And so when we have, you know, uh, one of these open file things, uh, then we can have a, a set file size. So in addition to, yeah. So in addition to like write data to file, uh, we would have one here that's like platform set file size. And uh, it's really just that. That's it. And if I go into the Win32 code here, uh, and look for the open file part of things. So platform open file is here. Uh, we should be able to just do, you know, a set file size call, right? So in here we do like win32 set file size. And here's the handle. Uh, I don't actually remember offhand what the prototype is for that. Uh, set end of file, that's what it's called. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the only way to do it, well, that's not true. There is a different way to do it. Uh, if you want to set the end of a file with the old school Win32 APIs, which is mostly what we've been using, so I think we should. You first have to move the file cursor to the end of the file and then set the end of the file. If you want to use a, uh, a single call to do it, I think there is a way to do it. It's called like set file info or some EX or something like this. You actually can do it. It's just, uh, it's only in like Windows 8 and up or one of those, it's one of those things. I'm sorry I can't remember which one it is at the moment. Um, I'm 99.9% .9 sure uh, I just can't remember what it's called. So you'll just have to take my word for it. You can do that. Um, What's this guy? I don't think that's what, that's not what I was thinking of. So I apologize. There's no real uh, way to, uh, there's no real way for me to tell you how to do it because I don't remember what the call is and it's hard to find in here, but you'll just have to trust me. There is a way you can do that. 
I'm pretty sure with one call, but we're going to do it in two to use the old school ones that work back in on XP and everything, right? So if we call set file pointer EX here, oops, like so, uh, and then we do set file end or set end of file, I think it was called. Set end of file. Uh, that will do it. And there is a little bit of an issue here with uh, race conditions. If you use set file pointer anywhere else. Thankfully, as you can see, we always just use the directed read. So do you see how we use the overlapped read here? So we never set the file pointer. So the fact that we only set it here means that there won't be any race conditions. Because even if two people call set file size at the same time, well, one of them was going to win anyway if they were both calling it unlocked. So it doesn't matter whose set file pointer ends up working, right? So if you do it this way, and I'll put this in here. You know what I'm saying? So there's a subtlety there that's worth understanding. If you're going to be doing this in your own code base, you can't be using the file pointer for your reads and writes if you're using it for this. Because, or you could, but you'd have to introduce locking, right? Because otherwise what could happen is you'd set the file pointer EX, your thread gets suspended right here <clears throat> before set end of file. Somebody else issues a write, sets the file pointer somewhere else, then you end up doing <clears throat> set end of file. See what I'm saying? And you, you end up setting the end of the file there, which is not what anyone ever asked for. So it's a completely nonsensical result. Does that make sense? So that's just, uh, you just gotta understand it, that's all. So we don't really have to do much. It's, it's literally just this. Um, <clears throat> and we can put an error here as well. But that's the entirety of the code. So set file pointer EX takes the handle, a large integer. Uh, the move method is just set. So file begin. Um, and then the new file pointer. So we don't care about that. <clears throat> we need to put this in a large integer um, just because that's what it's used to taking. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We can set quad part. So maybe this, let's say, oops. So we fill out a large integer, we'll pass that down and we'll call it a day. Ooh, what did I do wrong there? Win32 file error, oh, oops. There we go. All right, so I think that's it. Um, we obviously have to fill this out. So in game memory, platform API, uh, set file size, we have to do, uh, you know, remember that set file size there. Um, and I think now if we just call that in our lighting code, our dump should be correct. So in debug dump, Data, uh, not that one. 
In debug dump data, in here, before we close the file, we would just say platform set file size. And we'd tell it that the dump size was the entire size, right? So I, I just feel more comfortable with that. That's how it should work in the first place. Uh, so let's just see if that uh, fixes our situation. All right, so we should have a data dump now from the first run, um, and I should be able to validate that. Uh... <clears throat> Perfect. So I guess what I would say is I'm fairly confident that that's a reasonable result. Um. If the total error in your entire thing is that, you know what I might want to do though? Let's also take the max error. Because if all of that error came from one pixel, that would be bad. So we don't really care, I guess, what the total error is so much as we care what the maximum error is. So let's make sure we track that. So this will tell us for the part of the image, for the texel that's the absolute worst uh, at replicating the original results, what was it, right? Um, and so if we take a look at that value, uh, you know, like it's below the visible range, but does it mean, you know, 0.001, would I have liked it to be lower? Probably. Is it possibly with still within range? Maybe. Um, is it possibly a bug? I don't know, right? Um, So I'm not sure how to validate this further. Again, the problem with compiling two different pieces of code, um, or I should say two versions of the same piece of code, is if they're floating point, they could come out completely different. So it's a little bit hard to know uh, what to validate in that case. I'm gonna go ahead and see uh, if I run uh, the game in retail mode, I want to see what it what the validation error looks like there. Um, and maybe I also want to see what the error looks like in another scenario. So let's suppose that I also go somewhere else. Um, you know what, I'll, I'll also turn off the, the auto dump uh, since we don't really need that to be happening every time we start the game. Uh, let's set that to false. So... <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and run to a different location and see if the error stays roughly the same everywhere, which would be a better, at least a slightly better indication. I mean, it's not it's still not really good, but so if I dump there, um, oops, if I dump there, what do we get? Similar level of error. Uh, Higher error there. Uh, I mean, I guess not super much higher, but like still. So I don't know, I'm nervous about it. Like the total error per texel is still low, but the max error is kind of high. You know what I'm saying to you? 
And like, what's this about? Right? Again, that could just be because of floating point differences between the two compilations, but it's very hard to know. Um, So I'm just not sure how to proceed. I guess what I would say is, I suppose I'm comfortable with proceeding from here without further validation for one reason. And that is because the end result of this is just to produce the lighting result anyway. So when we put, if we change the code around and put it back into our game, we will see the error when we run if it's wrong. Like, meaning if it produces an unusable result, we'd know. So I suppose I'm okay with that. I suppose. <clears throat> so maybe I'm okay going forward with that. I don't know how much time I have here. Does anyone know how much time I have left? It's 1 o'clock, 12, 12, 12, I have at least a half an hour, right? Um... All right, let me just try some stuff here. So let me see <clears throat> what we want to do. I'm going to go to, uh, oops, not Visual Studio, uh, Vtune Amplifier. That's what it, we want. So I'm going to go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, run an analysis here. Um, I'm going to go to, uh, our, oops, our instructions per clock. Let me take a look at those. Um, just want to see what's going on. Oops. How do I get back to... Uh, I'm so bad at V2. So bad at V2. How do I get back to the way you launch an application? There we go. So this is no longer going to be a thing. Um, and now we go. So run. It says light boxes don't match. Again. Oh, right, because it, it, they don't. Um, so now we have a problem that our thing runs too quickly. Right, uh, because we we have this situation where um, we're only running one frame, <clears throat> one frame <clears throat> through the system. So I'm not sure how we want to get around that. Normally, what we'd like to do is run the thing many times, uh, but I'm not sure how feasible that actually is. I suppose we could just set the box refs in the box back the boxes back every time and just rerun it. Um, but really we only care about just that one piece of the lighting core anyway. So I suppose what we could do is maybe something like inside internal lighting core. If we wanna just run the work distribution many times, we just do. So maybe this thing we just do like something like this. So we can pass a repeat index in here um, and actually you know what let me do it this way so we'll just say the debug repeat count is something that you can pass in normally it only runs one time but if you want to you can tell it to run like lots of times 
So we can tell this to do, you know, 200 frames or, you know, let's say we want it to run for five seconds or something. And now we won't validate if that's set. So we can't do a validation on here, uh, but you know. We can just say if repeat count equals one, then we can validate. Otherwise we can't. Right? Um, so yeah, we can do something like that. Uh, and it's a little bit annoying. We probably want to do a run where we do the repeat count at the end just for validation purposes. So we probably want to do something more like this, uh, where we say internal, um, you know, debug run or you know, profile run. And what we would do is this entire nonsense, right? we would do the whole thing twice, right? So what we would do is probably something like this where the repeat count is, is in here. So we pass the re repeat count in or something, right? And when we do the profile run, we just do two of them. So we do one and then we do, you know, a bunch, right? Um, and that way we would do them b both ways. We would do them uh, one way for, you know, for validation and then another way for just trying to time the thing. You know what I'm saying? So we do something like that and it would print out that thing. Then it, you know, print out the error and all that so we could see if it went rogue. Um, and then we also have one where, you know, we would uh, then stall out like we're doing here to take a long time. I don't know how long we actually needed to take. Probably that was a little too long. So, because probably we're only running at 30 frames a second now. Oh, and we're, we're, threat, we're not threaded. So that was a much too high of an estimate. Um, so, you know, maybe something like this. This may be too short, but we'll see. Maybe too short. So I don't know. Well, let's maybe say that we're gonna do something more along those lines, and then we'll see if 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 VTune can can handle that. Um, All right, so that looks like it works okay. And you can kind of see what we're getting here in terms of cycle issues. Uh, and, you know, I think we're in an okay place now for trying to start optimization work. It looks like we're validating on that data. Again, the problem here is just that, like, I'm not sure floating point wise how to make this be more validated than that. I really couldn't tell you uh, because it's tough to know. I'm a little suspicious, but we'll see. So if we want to start with uh, the optimization process here, there's a couple of things that I want to look at. And you can see that we sort of have two, uh, I guess you might say we have actually three places to look at. So one place to look at is just when we're actually in here doing our uh, updates of, of like how we're doing our, t our uh, texture fills and stuff like that. So there's stuff in here that we can potentially try to optimize that is just how we post-process the textures. We can also turn that off if we don't care about looking at that particular piece of code yet. But the other thing we can do here is we can say, oh, well, you know, 
the ray casting, here's how that's working, and it's not particularly good right now. So if you take a look at what's happening with the leaf container stuff, you can see that here is the actual piece of code that loops over uh, that loops over bounding boxes to check. This piece of code, which loops over sort of sides of the st uh, of parti like spatial partitions, to see which parts of the partition we need to talk to to look at. That part is actually kind of totally messed up. We know that these come out in exactly the right order. So we don't need to be calling this routine. It's just an indirect load for no reason. Um, so we can pretty trivially get rid of that if we want to. And similarly, like a lot of this data isn't actually loaded in the most effic effic efficient way it could be. Already, like we're doing operations on stuff we don't actually care about. So if you look here, the box radius, for example, just flat out isn't used anywhere in the partition testing code, right? So if we were to sketch out what this code would look like um, in terms of what we actually care about, you can see that our should push is basically, uh, you know, a little binary composite here of these pieces of information. So we know we need close enough <clears throat> mask uh, and actually T valid even used here? Yeah, it's here. So so we need to compute these particular values, which means we need the min and the max, right? Max pass is, yeah, still used for T inside. So T min and T max are what we compute, which means we need box min and box max, right? Uh, which means we need these two Hadamard products, which means we just need uh, we just need the box min and the box max to have been here. So we don't actually care about the box p at all, right? We don't need that value. We don't care about the box radius at all. All we really wanted to know was the box min and the box max. So those are the two values that we like should have been storing. Right, Because although we care about those potentially here, maybe uh, it's unclear that we actually do, but maybe we do, right? Mostly we just want to know like, hey, we just need to know the box min box max for the testing. So we would want to just store those two things. And furthermore, when we look at what we actually are pushing on here, um, when we read this out, you can see what we actually get out of the box itself. What we need to know is, is it a leaf, right? What's its first child index and what's the child count, right? That's what we actually wanted to know out of that. Because we never look at this box again. So if you imagined packing that information into something more concise, we could make this routine be a lot less stupid. You know what I'm saying to you? So let's start with some simple things we can use to improve uh, what we're doing dumb at the moment. So let's start by saying, what if we create a custom structure here that's like our Raycast stack, right? And the Raycast stack is just gonna store the stuff we actually care about, right? So the only thing we really need to know here is, oh, and you know what? Before I do any of this, let's actually also get a metric in place because we should just be able to grab that, right? So when we go here and run our light prof uh, code here, um, so this, this piece of code, right? So that, let's take a, let's take a wall clock time. Right, let's just take a wall clock time. So if I come down to uh, this code here in um, everyone fine with Windows.h? Yeah. 
So if we want to then inside the profile run uh, set of, of funnesses here, what I want to do is when we go into the internal lighting core, I want to snap uh, a, a timing. So I just want to do a like query performance counter at the beginning and the end, right? Like that. Um, but query for performance counter is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, I don't love the way it works, so we may make a separate one for it, but yeah, we'll see. So if we just use query performance counter, which, you know, query performance counter, which apparently meant like there'd be some glasses. I wish I could have got that back. There was like some sunglasses for some reason. Um, so if I do large integer start and end here, uh, there's the start or start time, end time. Uh, then we just have a wall clock time. It's like, how long did this thing take, right? Uh, and then if I ask what the performance frequency, okay. I, s I swear to God, man. They just, Microsoft is such a disaster. Um, query performance frequency. I get the frequency back. And then I just want to print out the timing result. So basically, what I want to do, what I want to know here is like how long did this thing take? Like how long did it take to run? So in order to do that, we know we just want to subtract the two. So assuming that we got a run that wasn't one of these types of runs, I'm just going to say, look, uh, let's just take the difference here, right? So the diff is going to be uh, start time, quad part end time quad part. We're just going to subtract these two, right? Actually, let's just do it that way. I'm annoyed by the fact that my head is in the way. There we go. So let's take a diff and then we'll divide by the frequency, right? So we'll just say like total seconds equals uh, the diff divided by the frequency, like so. And we'll print that out to standard out. And this is just there to see if we can see any particularly large improvements in this in the speed uh, while we're at it. Oops, total seconds. Um, and we may want to do that a little bit differently. Um, we'll see. So if we go ahead now and uh, we just take a, mm, yeah, here. If we run this, I should be able to see how long it took to do all of these. Uh, and, you know, we'll see, it. we should see an improvement in the speed if we make any major changes. But really, we're just doing that just to make sure, like, we have some kind of ballpark number to go by. And it's surprisingly stable, um, as you can see, uh, even with all the variants, just because we're running so many of those. Right. Now, if we want to start actually putting real timing into this, we have to do more work. We'd have to figure out how we want to actually time it. Uh, and we'd want to like maybe check for like if the total time went down, run it again and keep going. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but for the interest of just like programming on stream, we'll leave it that way for now. Um, so let's just go ahead and take a look at what happens if I change that stack out. So that's all I'm going to do here. Um, oops. Okay. So, ray cast stack entry. In here, I'm just going to say, what are the things that you actually needed to know, right? So here's root box. What is it used for? That's it, right? That's it. 
So we only care about, like, the only things we care about at all in the Raycast uh, is, was it a leaf, right? So we just want to know, like, what's the first child index? Oops. Uh, what's the child count? I guess, what's the... Yeah, what's the child count? I mean, we could store the add. I don't know, maybe what's the last, or one past last child index, I don't know. So we store like the range that we're going to go over. Um, Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that for now. So we'll store the range. This is the range we're going to go over. Uh, and then we'll pad this out to a 64-bit value by just saying, then there's the, like, is leaf, right? So then what we would do instead of the way that we were pulling these things off before is we would say, like, oh, okay. So actually what's going to happen here is we're going to say, like, there's a starting box, okay? And that's going to be the box that we get uh, out of the root box. Uh, the box stack uh, original depth here, so box stack uh, goes something like this. Uh, we need to do like is leaf, and that's going to be, you know, this, this nonsense here. And really, we know it's always true. So, I mean, I mean, always false for the first one. So we could just initialize that to false, I guess. I don't know how we want to treat that. Depends what you're going for here. But So the first index is just this thing. The last index uh, is this nonsense here. Uh, and then we've pushed the thing, right? So that's how you would push something on. Uh, and then the box stack is going to be raycast stack entry now, like so. So once we do that, our, our pulling off this thing, oops, looks like that. And now what we do is just like, okay, entry is leaf is going to be this, right? Entry first index is that. Entry one pass last index is that. So now we're just pulling off just this little token that says, hey, this is the information you actually needed to remember, right? Uh, and this doesn't really get us very far, but it's at least something, right? Uh, so, you know, it's a start towards what we actually want. So we'll just keep you know, we'll keep whittling away at it, right? So then all we need to do is when we actually do a push on here, uh, again, like the the should push thing, we want to just get this piece of, of data up here. So here's the like push entry, right? The push entry is leaf equals a thing. The push entry first index equals a thing. The push entry one pass last index equals a thing, right? Then we just say, if we should push, then it's the push entry. Uh, otherwise, it's not. So we just do the conditional assignment there like we would have any other way, right? All right, so in the push entry, we just need this code. Uh, and now instead of root box, which doesn't exist, it's just box, right? Um, so these are all the same, but it's just box. Uh, we won't have root box anymore. Oops. So it's starting box, starting box, starting box. And we're done. Okay, so let me just take a look at what that does. 
because it should run and produce the same error, which it does. And I don't know that it'll actually improve things for our runtime at all, but hopefully it doesn't make them slower. Wow, it does make them slower. All right, so we've learned something. So for whatever reason, it likes better the thing we were doing before. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I wonder why. Is it because it doesn't actually know? Is it because that's a struct? It is doing something dumb? Let's take a look. So I'm interested to know what the difference is here. So let me just uh, take a look at the assembly because I want to see why it changed. So here you can see uh, it's actually doing the test, I believe, here. So, because I don't see a CMOV. What the heck? Oh, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the wrong application. I'm like, how is this looking multi-threaded? Um, come back to me. Where is my lighting code? So I want to see right here. And I want to see what the assembly looks like. So yeah, it's not good. Um, <clears throat> so there is a CMOV. There's a CMOV here. So it correctly CMOVed this, but it did not correctly CMOV this. So I'm just curious, hold on a second. If I don't do this, and instead make a thing that's like, So you just pass like the box pointer and then we do something like this. So, you know, the is leaf container boolean flag uh, gets put, I don't know, What's that actual value? It's one. So maybe it's just like, yeah, is leaf container actually, we'll just store that for now. So we'll do is leaf container or first child index shifted up by 16. And then this nonsense here also shifted up by 16, right? So we just or all this nonsense together. Uh, and that's our, our pack, right? And then we just have to have an unpack. I can probably actually just do that at the top. So never mind. All right, so we get rid of this. We say pack cast entry. This is what the past, uh, don't ask me why that's a 16. 
Uh, so we can pack cast entry this way. Let's do it here. So we just say, all right, box stack depth. By the way, this is now just a U64. We just say box stack depth plus plus equals pack cast entry. And we say that we want that to be our starting box like that. Um, we come down here and we say uh, this is going to be uh, a U64 push entry equals pack box, pack cast entry for some other box, right? And then we try to make this part work by just saying entry equals whatever the latest entry was. We take a look at uh, this value and say, if the entry and light box leaf container, if, if that's true, then do your nonsense. Um, the first index uh, and the one pass last index, we unpack this way by saying whatever the entry is shifted down by 16 anded out and the entry shifted down by 32 anded out right um what is this complaining about this needs to be upcasted to u32 unfortunately i mean u64 because c is stupid and this is not a thing Okay, so let me just see if it get any if it, the compiler got any smarter by doing that. I mean, maybe. Who knows? Also, let me actually see if this works because I kind of jammed that together. Seems fine. Produced the same results, right? Um, so, <laughs> and now we're back to the same time again. So again, zero cost abstraction, putting those in a structure, totally didn't work. This is why I try to tell people that's not a thing. No one ever believes me. But if you actually ever spend time looking at what the compiler does, it, anything you try to do is very likely to not be one, right? All right, so we're still doing... No, so you see how we don't have any jumps anymore, right? So we do our loads and the only jump is to jump back to, uh, the only jump is to jump back to the top of the loop, right? So I think, that might not be true. Let's take a look. So what's all this nonsense? What are all these jumps for? <sighs> Compiler. Why are you jumpy? All right. What's wrong with the compiler here? Why does it not want to do what I want it to do? So here's an idea. What if I actually were to store this piece of information so the compiler can't mess with me and it's just part of the data that we push, right? Um, 
that would fix the problem. Unfortunately, it requires me to edit the lighting box structure a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so if you looked in here and you were like, oh, all right, like what's all this about? If we actually just made this, oh, and you know what? This all fits in a U32, doesn't it, right? So if we just made this be what we actually grab, if we lemon grab that out, then it really can't hurt us, can it? So what if I told it this, right? What if I said like, all right, there's a U32 that I need you to grab. Um, in fact, in fact, in fact, So we want a lighting box pack in here, right? Like so. And the data would still be the same, but now like places like this, you just you, you use, you know, dot pack, right? Um, all of these need a pack. And no, 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 yes, 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 yes. All right. So here we could just say, all right, the box stack is a lighting box pack, which is just 32. The compiler can't figure this out. I do not know what to tell it. All right, so there's, all you gotta do is put 32 bits on a stack. Like, can you manage it, right? So put 32 bits on the stack, please. That's all you have to do. All you have to do is copy that 32 bits onto a stack. That's all I'm asking, right? There you go, right? Super, super simple. Nothing, no ands, no nothing, just real basic. I don't remember what this is, uh, that, right? All right. Um, First index is its first child index. There. Is everyone happy now? Is everyone smiling and delighted in the revelry of it all? I certainly hope so. So now this is nothing. We're not even gonna do anything, right? All we're gonna do is push pack on there. That's it. And hopefully the compiler can figure that out. I don't know if it can though. Did that work? Yes. Okay. And by the way, we actually did get faster now, which is what I would have expected. I wouldn't really have expected it to get much faster, but it got a little bit faster, um, which is what I would have expected, right? We were 7.1, 7.2 before. We dropped down to 7.0 now, right? All right. Thank you, Mr. Compiler. Now let's take a look at the code here and see if it actually got rid of the stupid jumps like, why is that jump still there? It looks like we still have jumps here. Like, there's less. 
but why are we still jumping? Who is jumping and why? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what is with the jump? What's with the jump festival? Here's our computations. Shuffing, subbing, right? That's all the stuff I would expect. Um, here's us doing the compares and the min. It's all good. It's all fine. We move mask and we do a test and then we J and Z. So the compiler thought it was better to do a jump than to just do the mov mask instructions. What the heck, man? What is the compiler doing? Why is it doing that? I, I don't, I'm kind of at a loss here for what's the deal with that. Um, it's probably because it's looking at this and expanding this out to like the if version of it because it's like, well, I don't have to evaluate this if this is already true and I think I'm saving time, but I'm not. So let's look at these. So what's any true do? So any true does a mov mask PS of comparison P into the Boolean result, right? So mov mask, mov mask PS. Those two any closer and any inside. So this is getting masked on any close enough. So, so what is, okay, so what are these? Close enough we don't even use anymore, do we? I mean, I thought we were kind of saying that we were done with that. Hmm. So we are still stopping our traversal when we get too far away, apparently. 15 meters from the origination point. Hmm. So I don't know about that. Like what happens if we just take that out? Do, do we get really slow? I just, I'm curious. Like how much are we relying on that? Because I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent that is, you know, something we were relying on. So to a certain extent, it's it's quite a bit, it looks like. I mean, unless that changed something else. We, we are actually taking advantage of that early out case. So, 
So I guess what I would say is... Is this really the right way to do this masking? Like, could we mask these in the registers first and then move them out? Do these actually have to be done separate? So like, any inside means if we're inside this box, we would want to traverse down, right? If any of the rays were. So that makes sense. If any of the hits in this box hits are closer potentially than the ones we already have in that lane, then we do want to go down, right? But any close enough is just saying, could we have hit, is it too far away? We don't want, we're trying to knock out. So I feel like those should be able to go on the same line, right? So, I mean, couldn't we do like this? I mean, is this really that bad if we just said What did I do? That's supposed to just be box pack. So I don't know, like, is that totally bad to do it that way? So it produces basically the same result, and you can see it got faster to do it that way, right? The total error is still the same, and that improved the speed. So does that now successfully convince the compiler to stop monkeying around? No, it doesn't. There's the mob mask. There's the end jump not equal. What are you doing? I don't know, man. I don't know how to convince this thing to get all these jumps out of here. They, they don't even, you don't need to do any of these jumps. And it really wants to do them. So I'll try one more thing. Uh, you know, we've got the death plus one should push here, right? Uh, Maybe the other thing is like if it does it think just because this is a struct if I change this to just be a u32 Would that help it know what was going on? I, like I don't know So if I just said hey look uh, 
this is literally just a blind value, okay? Um, so like, trust me, just write a U32 to the stack for the love of God, right? Oops. Is that, is that in the tape, in the cards or not? Nope. I don't know, man. It seems pretty intent on JNZing this thing, and I have no idea why. Just, just change these two things to CMOVs. Like, why, why are you doing that? Is there a way to force this stupid compiler to like do a CMOV? Can you, why am I in DuckDuckGo? So here's the Intel C compiler. That's not what we're talking about. Anyone? Stack Overflow? That's talking about the So a conditional statement can be only one comparison. This is somebody who is trying to do the same thing I'm, I'm trying to do. I don't know. So like, Does this help? Please just, just generate a conditional move for me. I just want to see what the code runs like with, with a conditional move. I hate compilers. I hate the entire idea. Like, it should be a given that a modern compiler and a modern language would just let you say that you wanted a C move somewhere. I'm the programmer, listen to me. But of course they've added, I can make lambdas that I pass to things. I can have auto declared variables. I can do, they added everything under the moon. I can't just friggin' C move something. It's like they don't understand that like programming a computer means I'm trying to actually tell the computer what to do, not off in language flower land with Mr. Rogers. All right, anyway. Um, so I don't know if we can try to finesse this. I'm just trying to see if I can get this thing to output a stupid C move. Um, that's, that's all I was trying to do. And it's, it's not looking likely, right? It doesn't seem to want to do that. Um, I 
I mean, that's as, as concise as I think it can be. I don't even know if it can be. Oh, no, 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 it could. Well, let me try that first, though. Let me, let me try them both. I guess there is one other thing I could try to see if it helps. Nope. It's got one. So it it cor so it correctly knows that that's a C move, but I guess that's not. So what could we do? Is this possible? Like what if we did this? What if we did like that? So I just use a reference instead of a pointer. Same exact thing, like doesn't mean anything, means exactly the same thing. Does compiler know that? No. We still got a J and Z up here even, if I'm not mistaken. Like where's that coming from? What's going on? We load in, we do our math ops, we sub, we do whatever, it's fine. Test EAX, EAX for J and Z. So the should push is what's getting test there. And we do the J and Z. So just, then we have, it's trying to avoid doing this comparison in the move. So that, that's unfortunate. Um, I'm not sure if there's any way to crossbar this. It could be that what we should do is do the broadcast up here. So one thing we could do is like, is do the or up here somehow. We can't do a straight line or because you need to or all of them together. I'm not sure what the way to do that would be to move the mask internally. So <sighs> let me just see what we've got here. And let's let's also see if we just Yeah. Nothing nothing no luck. So without adding extra instructions here, I'm not sure how we would do that. I mean, we could go ahead and futz around more. Like we could do a thing that looked like this, where we basically said, all right, so the push call is going to take the uh, closer, close enough, right? And we're gonna do like a shuff and an and to it, right? So we do like a shuffle. Um, so we just say, all right, um, I 
we would just say, take close to close enough, get the first and second thing from that. Uh, and we, and I guess then you would take the other part of this one. So you'd say, you want the first and second part of close or close enough and the first and second part of any inside, right? I think that's what we're talking about here. And then you would do another one of those where you said, and then take and stack the second and third parts of both of those, right? So you do like stack zero, stack one. So we're just shuffling to get things into the right lanes. So now we've got one that's got zero, one, zero, one, and two, three, two, three. We would or those together. Right? So now we know if zero and two match, one and three match, right? Um, and so then we just have to do that one more time and we would be good, right? Because now we just have zero, we just need to do and I'll just call it this, I don't know what to call them. Um, so we just need to do a, another sh shuffle for x of that result, right? Because in the, uh, Wait, no, that's not quite right. So in zero, 01, we got zero, 01, zero, 01, 2323. Two, we do those. Now we have to do that one more time. So we have to do this exact thing one more time. Right? Although that's possibly not true because we could pack these. I'm just, sorry, I'm just trying to see what's going on here. So uh, I could do like uh, stack 01, and then this is like, Y, Z here, this is well, X, Y or whatever, right? So then we just say like, okay, take O1 and produce, you know, the, uh, the zero, one, two, three here, right? So this is just a slow oaring together. You have to like, or, 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 this is like a horizontal or, right? Um, and then at the end, uh, now you just do the one shuff. So you just do, what's the word we're looking for? Uh, should push equals any true stack X, Y, I guess. Um, this is actually called T inside. There we go. So that's a little hacky. I probably shouldn't leave that in there. I was just curious if I could get this thing to do something resembling anything that I wanted it to do, which, you know, didn't look likely. But let's go ahead and take a look. Let's jump here. So that's one CMOV for the stack, but not for this one here, right? Let's take a look at it one more time. So here we are loading up, shuffling. Uh, we do our nonsense dance here. We do our subs, our MOVs. We compare and MOV. I don't know, oops, I accidentally hit step in that window, I guess. Uh, we do our ores together, we do our mob mask, and so we're almost down to it. If we could just, why is this moving so many things in there too? What's, I don't know why it's doing that, but let's try one more time to get this to work. So 
here we're almost like, what if we just change the way we're doing this? So we're just like, look, stack at is this thing. And we just say the thing we're going to push in there, right, is, is one of these two. We then say box stack uh, depth uh, equals stack at. And we have to do that before we update the depth. Do you understand that? Probably not. Hey, hey, hey! Look at that, folks! It only took like 30 minutes but I think I was able to teach the compiler how to do a conditional move. There it is. All right, but I probably screwed up there because anytime you write SIMD code, because SSE is a disaster of instruction set, you usually get something wrong. So I'm guessing that the error is high here. Oh, no, all right, it was the same. So I didn't screw it up, I guess, maybe, I'm not sure. All right, so it can C move those now. The problem is, yeah, it's slower because I had to do all this extra crap. Like, we don't want that in there. So, I don't know. Let's see if I re-enable this now. Is it, it did that, that little squiggle I did there, does that help? Maybe that's all we needed. And if that's the case, we can go back to doing it the not slow way. Um, and just see, did it work, did it work, did it work? No, it did not. So the problem is, as far as I can tell, as soon as you start to do this, it thinks it needs to do, uh, it thinks it needs to do a test on this, but I don't actually want it to do that. So maybe I can phrase this in a different way. So for example, if I was to write that, would it work? Now that's not the same expression. So I don't actually know that we want to do that, but let's just see what it does. Um, I'm just curious. Yes. So if I was to do that with an or, How would I make this happen? So if we do any true on closer, close enough, and then we do any inside, and we've got those two, and I wanna or those two together, we know we've got a mask now that's like, you know, 16 bits of mask. We only actually care about four bits out of the 16. Any four will do as long as they're spread out by four bits each. Uh, <clears throat> and the question is, is there some way we can quickly produce that result? But wait, that's an or. So wait, that should just work, shouldn't it? What am I, what am I talking about? We just care if anything's set, so that's fine. What if, I don't know why I'm freaking out. So wait, does that work? Just doing what I did there. So it does work, okay. So we can get the conditional move to happen, we can get this to happen, but we don't necessarily produce faster code here, do we? Because that didn't look faster to me. Let me take a look at what we've got.
Yeah. Although those things... Yeah, so I guess I'm not sure why that wouldn't always be faster. But also, so this doesn't actually have to be this way too. It could be, it could just use uh, the mask and close enough as a mob. It doesn't have to do an and in this space here, but I'm not sure why that would itself be slower. It might be because this is clogging up the pipe a little. So can we just do Can we just do this? Oops. Should push equals any true T inside or any true Can we do this? Does this, does this help us? So we just mob mask those guys and then do it in scalar. You know what I'm saying to you? Does anyone like that? Yes, it's fine with that. All right, so does that help us at all? Don't know if it does. So I don't know why we're slower that way, but it looks like, I mean, from testing those two paths out, we'd have to investigate them a little bit further. But it looks like that, uh, it looks like that doing the jump is cheaper than doing the two C moves. Like it would rather do it. So skipping a few of these ops with a potentially mispredicted branch, maybe the branch is very predictable, could be the answer there. Because if you, if you don't usually mispredict the branch, then saving the work might actually help us. But I don't know. So I think this is the first thing I would like to look at. We'll have to look at it with VTune in mind there. But it looks like it actually would just prefer to do the, the test, right? So if we, if we let it do what it wanted to do, which is this. Okay. Should really like check both of these. So that's what it wanted to do before. So here's with the uh, the branchy like you know doing lots of jumps around. And that's like way faster, right? It just, it prefers that, right? So if I cut and paste this and I just say, all right, like here's that part of the routine. Let's put both of those in so we can check them. Then next weekend, what we can do is take a look and see what exactly is going on there just so we understand why it's faster to do it that way. Because I'm not sure I understand why, because it seems like that branch shouldn't be uh, very predictable, right? 
And so I just would like to know like what the heck, right? Like what's happening there. And it could be that there's a bunch of things that I'm not like thinking of, right? So here's the if one, here's the else clause, oops. So there we go. And uh, it looks like that was still in there, even in the fast case, right? So this just looks like that. Right? Um, so in here, we would then say like, okay, we got to do uh, this check. This is like the current fast path. Right? And then we want to know like, Uh, we want to know what's going on here. And so let me just recreate this. So it is correct. It's like any true T inside, double or, and then the and, well, I guess there's any true close enough was the fast one. So basically like this. This is the should push written the same way as the outer should push, right? Oops. Um, <clears throat> so in theory, now, if I actually run this like so, that's the fast way. If I go like this, it's the slower way. Now, it's not like much slower, but it is slower. And so it'd be nice to know like why wouldn't having that be branchless be better? And we'd like to just go look at it because it does seem like that's a bit weird to me. And I'd like to just grab the two assembly languages, outputs and compare them. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the, uh, um, uh, the Q and A. Well, mm, you know what I just realized though? So there is something a little bit bad about this loop why the CMOVs might not actually be an improvement now that I think about it. It's because we only do a fan out of two on each of these partitions. So our partition stuff is pretty crappy. That's why we were like going to like be replacing this with, with a more streamlined thing. So it could be that that's what's happening is that it does the CMOVs, but then it immediately has to load the CMOVs here in order to start doing this branch. So that's just a mispredicted branch again, probably, right? So I could see that. It'd be nice if we could figure out a way to not have this branch here, but I'm not sure there's any way to do that. Um. I mean, there is one way to do it, I guess, and that's if you actually streamed out the boxes and then streamed them back in. That, that would not work, I don't think. Yeah. Anyway, Q&A. <clears throat> I 
I think the MSDN you were looking for is potentially set file information by handle. Yes, that sounds right. Like I said, um, like I said, I think I think there's an API for it, and that sounds like the right one. I knew there was one, but it's just a later API. It was one they they added. So. so logical or and and are only short circuited if the compiler has to short circuit them since there's no side effects here there's no it the compiler i mean unless the compiler is really weird isn't going to think that it can't do an AND for some registers, right? The only time it has to care about the short circuiting properties is if there's a side effect and there isn't one here. Can't you just use close enough instead of close or close enough in the should push assignment, close enough is already ANDed with mask. This is zero, one, instead of, oh. You are correct. Um, let me leave this one in the branchless case. This is the branchless version. Uh, not the branchy version. So one thing that's interesting is, so if we had a bug but still produced the same result, that also kind of means that one of the problems is these branches aren't particularly well exercised. So it that could also be like another reason, right? So you notice that one's pretty close to fast enough when we did them all in, uh, when we just used one any true and then went with the, the branchless version. So I do wonder if maybe that means we should be <laughs> we should be looking at this a little bit more carefully and doing a faster version of this. You know what I'm saying? But oh, right, no I did. This is I <clears throat> This is a, an annoying way to test code. Yeah, because this one was much slower, right? This was like 7.3. Yeah, 7.5. So uh, this way is, I guess, the current fastest branchless version that we had. Uh, and anyway, so someone in the chat was pointing out to this. So why do we need to do an or here because closer close enough was anded with this and the reason is because uh well i guess now that we took that out though yeah that's a good question well no because you i think because in this particular case Oh, yeah, no, you're right. We don't really need this, do we? That's just superfluous. I don't know why I did that. So I guess it's just close enough. So this is just this. <coughs> I don't know why that extra and was in there. Doesn't need to be. Right. Uh, 
Um, all right, so if we do a prof on this path, uh, this is the branchless path, although I'd have to go verify that it's still branchless since we don't really know what the compiler decided to do. Um, and then if I do this path, this is the branchy path. Oops. Close enough. So this is the branchy path. So it's a little bit weird, um, but because those C moves are used, uh, like potentially immediately after, I can see why that's not such a good idea. So if we were streaming this out more, maybe they would be better, uh, but we're not. So, for example, if it were a circular buffer, you know what I'm saying? It would be interesting to test this with a circular buffer so that instead of popping the last thing you wrote, you pop the, le like the thing you wrote uh, as far back as you can. Um, then you would not be having those collisions. I don't know. I'm going to put a note in just to try that. Um, because that might be interesting. Somebody in chat had the idea of loading the raycast through the DLL for testing. Could this remove the floating point errors in the test code? That That is a pretty good idea. I like that idea a lot. Um... Yeah, we could do that. So the only thing we would have to do there is we'd have to make an entry point for it. I'm sorry, there's so many questions I can't really handle them all. Is it possible to structure the game code so that it would run reasonably fast in debug mode? Would that be worth the hassle? Sure, you can. Just don't run the lighting. Right? <laughs> Will you come to the dark side and try const? Uh, the optimizer doesn't use const, so. <clears throat> there's there's very one there's one specific case where the compiler can optimize with const, and it, we don't even have that case. So, it, const is useless for optimization. If you don't believe me, go watch Chandler Karras talk about it. Um, he is the guy who oversees the optimizer for LLVM, so. If he says they don't use it, I believe him. Um, let's see. When am I dropping the little of course? As soon as it's done. Why have you uploaded last handmade here episode on Molly Rocky to account? Um, so there is only one account now. It's just since we post everything on that one account, I just call it Molly Rocket now. It's the only account we have. We don't have another account. I just changed the name from Handmade Hero to Molly Rocket because like I'm not 
we had other videos we wanted to post, and we posted like the Anna Draws It there as well, like back when we posted that. So it's just called Molly Rocket now. And so stuff gets posted there that's Molly Rocket related. It's Handmade Hero or not. <clears throat> MSVC is very often not optimizing away obvious things. Basically, you cannot do so-called zero-cast abstractions with it. For example, it always does short-circuiting, or from experience, I also remember it sometimes calls empty constructors. Why not use a reasonable require like Clang, GCC, ICC? Um, so Clang also has a bunch of problems. Uh, generate, like, Clang generates slower code for Meowhash than MSVC. So it's never a clear win to switch compilers. I don't use G, uh, Clang on Windows because, like, it still has a little ways to go before it's battle-proofed, in my opinion. Like, it's only just been recently that you could use Clang on Windows and get, like, usable debug info. So I do think eventually, like, I will probably switch to Clang permanently on Windows, but maybe, like, in a year or two. Um, <clears throat> Like when I'm really, really sure that, that I'm not going to be having weird stuff, like I'm trying to debug my app and like it, it output like a crappy PDB that doesn't quite show the right info or whatever, right? Which it was doing for a while. Uh, in one of the very first episodes I am in here, you mentioned to me it would be a good idea to rec recreate the window if WM destroy was caught in the window procedure. In what sort of scenario does this happen? Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to recreate the window if WM destroy was caught in the window procedure. I'm not sure what I would have meant by recreate the window. Um, I guess if I just meant, look, if someone tried to destroy our window, we could just make a new one. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Sorry. It's been a long time. I don't remember exactly what context I said that in. Uh, and just to be clear about the const thing, it's not like it's MSVC that doesn't use const. Like, Clang doesn't use const either, because you can't. The C++ spec pretty much prevents the optimizer from using const, because const cast is legal. These optimizers seem to be low level. How do you know when it's worth going to this level versus zooming out to examine the overall algorithm, memory layout, or data volume? Um, so actually, we're sort of at the beginning of things here, which is just investigation. So more specifically, what I was doing there was not so much trying to optimize this routine per se, as I was trying to look at what effect branches were having in that routine, right? So I wouldn't actually, we're not optimizing yet. We're just looking at what's happening in these routines to get a feel for what's going on. Um, <clears throat> As far as when to uh, look at the overall algorithm, we're going to do that very shortly because we need our spatial partition to be better. But before, to unwind the entire thing, before I replace how we're storing the spatial partition, I wanted to verify that nothing stupid was happening in the current one. So I wanted to make sure that the bran extra branches in there weren't a problem. And it looks like they aren't. So. I do think, at least at this point, we could consider this traversal to be representative of this spatial hierarchy, right? That's important because I don't want to go replacing the spatial hierarchy and claiming that it got faster when really the reason that it got faster was because there's something stupid happening in the previous one, right? So it's important to kind of look at what's going on now and make sure there's nothing dumb going on before we start to claim that we changed something and made an improvement? So the answer is no, we're not really looking at low-level optimizations right now. All we were doing today, and the reason we were looking at a finicky thing today, was that I was just trying to, ver I just wanted to see, is it fair to say that this loop is operating as expected, or was there something weird going on? And I wanted to make sure that using CMOVs wouldn't be like a huge win or something in there before I claimed that it was running at roughly the speed I could expect. So hopefully that helps. Uh, 
Uh, if John was talking about your story, yeah, we could raid it after this. I guess what I'm curious about is curious about is why you shouldn't just terminate the application if you get Debian destroyed in a window procedure. Because who knows where it came from? I mean, we should have been the ones to quit our application, right? How many hours a week do I work normally? Uh, total, including being on stream for Handmade Hero, you mean? I don't know, a lot. A lot of hours. <laughs> many, many hours. I don't know. 60? Of actual work? Like, I don't count it as work if I'm, like, not actually programming or something. Yeah, my RSI problem is like totally gone. So switching away from Emacs, so not using control and alt keys when I program, and rock climbing pretty much fixed it. I don't, I don't have any wrist pain anymore. Is it possible to not call virtual alloc at all? So create a global array of bytes and then point to that? Um, you could, but it's pointless because the place that those bytes came from was virtual alloc anyway. So all you're doing there is having the OS call virtual alloc for you instead of you calling it. So you could try, but it doesn't really do anything. Will we be releasing pieces of code to plug to me? Uh, yeah, after Handmade Hero is done, uh, I think I said two years after it ships, we'll release it in the public domain. What do you use instead of control alt keys? Uh, yeah, they're not, I don't use Vim commands because I never was a VI user. I was an Emacs user. So I didn't have any like pre-bias towards VI controls, but I did create my own modal binding that's, you know, a, a, a modal binding like Vim. So escape and tilde switch between command and edit mode. And uh, I just made my own key binding. So they're not really very much like Vim, but they are modal in the way that Vim is modal uh, and has different modes of editing. So I don't know if that answers the question, but they're not Vim controls, but they're in a similar spirit. Could you stream your daily working process of 935 sometime? No, that's all private code. We don't talk about any of that. <clears throat> and yeah, you can, so adding const with Clang does induce an optimization if the front end can see that the const is uh, being used in a particular way, right? So the front end can see uh, a const that it knows can't be cast that's where you get an optimization. Well, you might get an optimization if the, co if the compiler happens to see it, right? Everywhere else, it doesn't help you. So, and it especially doesn't help you in what we're doing now where the compiler can see all the values. So when the compiler can see all of the values, you don't need const because it's not telling the compiler anything it doesn't already know. Uh, that makes sense. Is it important nowadays to still support x86? Probably not. Um, there could be certain specific markets where you care. So it kind of depends, if that makes sense. Um, but it's, it's pretty specialized. If you're just like someone shipping a game on Steam, like no. Right. And no, we're never going to use Vulcan on Handmade Hero. I can't stand Vulcan. <clears throat> uh, 
I mean, we'd, we'd do a D3D12 port before we did a Vulcan port, if we were going to do a port to something. All righty. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, meh, too many things, too many windows are open right now. All right, thank you everyone for joining me for the episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you want to follow the series at home, you can always pre-order the game on handmadehero.org and it comes with a source code so you can play around with it at home if you would like to. Um, we also have a Kickstarter going right now for our comic. If you're interested in a, in a print edition of it, that's the place to go. There's a banner on the page. So you don't have to remember the URL. You can just click on the banner on Handmade Hero. Um, we also have some fun stuff coming up. Uh, Shortly after this, I will be posting uh, the first video on the Molly Rocket YouTube channel uh, that is a, a, a little series that Anna and I made called Plots Illustrated. And it's, it's just a little thing where Anna and I like basically talk to each other about like trying to reconstruct the plot of a movie. Uh, our first one we do is Rise of the Skywalker. Uh, and that'll be posted to the Handmade Hero channel. Uh, immediately after this and then Anna tries to like draw out the plots and uh, we have several of these as Anna finishes drawing them we'll be posting them uh, diff like going through the plot in like little two minute chunks basically that she kind of does like little pseudo animation for um, so those will be coming up as well so please stay tuned to the hand to the um, same place you get the handmade hero stuff just the Molly Rocket YouTube channel if you just go there it'll be on there uh, I'll post it on Twitter as well that's it for today. I'll be back here next week uh, to take a little bit closer look at how we can get those loops running a little bit better. Uh, and we'll have to sort of think about what the right way is to do that. Obviously, fixing our spatial partition to be better is going to be a big part of that, too. So we'll sort of start that optimization path, see if we can't get those numbers down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get Twitch to raid John's channel now. Um, maybe I can, maybe I can't. But if I can't, uh, please go to twitch.tv slash naysayer88 because uh, he's doing his talk now. So uh, he and Sean are going to be chatting for a while and that'd be a place to go. If you like Handmade Hero, you're probably going to like that. So we're going to try and get over to that. Um, and uh, I'll see you folks next week. Take care, everybody.